Oscar Pettiford's legacy cannot be understated. He raised the bar for every jazz bass player. He was a virtuoso on the instrument. The recordings he left us with, including albums with Miles, Monk, Duke Ellington, timeless. But he also left us with an original composition, which has become a standard and a rite of passage for every jazz bass player. This tune has been humbling many a cat for the last 60 years. When I was 15, my bass teacher handed me this music and said, you want to be a jazz bass player? You need to learn this. So why is it so hard? Well, to begin with, the tune is in the key of D flat. That's five, count them, five flats. Not too much fun when you know you can't basically play any open strings. But it's also because the melody is very linear and based in bebop concepts. That means we're creating lines using scales and arpeggios, along with chromatic notes, to outline the chords. And we're doing it at a faster tempo, which requires a lot of moving around on the instrument to pull it off. To put it in context, most horn players were doing this in the 1950s, but on bass, Oscar Pettiford was way ahead of his time, and this tune is proof of that. So what's the controversy all about? Well, let's start with the name. Trichotism is not really a word, but trichrotism is. A trichrotism is a condition of the arterial pulse in which there is a triple beat. Depending on the record that you pick up, you'll get one of these two versions of the title. For instance, Lucky Thompson called it trichotism, and Oscar Pettiford called his trichrotism. The tune itself also has a lot of slight variations in the melody depending on which version you learned it from. Now, I know, I'm nitpicking here, but the real difference is the last two bars of the bridge, which sound either like this, or like this. With probably the common opinion being, well, Lucky Thompson's version came earlier, Oscar Pettiford actually played on that record, so it must be the right one, right? Well, not exactly. The earliest version was actually recorded by Pettiford himself in 1954, titled Trick Rotism, by the way. And of course, Check out the two bars at the end of the bridge. Does this mean that there's a correct way to play the tune? No. But after 30 years, this tune is still a workout for me. From Kenny Clark to Jimmy Cleveland to Ray Brown to Max Roach. There's a wealth of amazing versions of this tune. Call it whatever you want. Just check it out. And if you want to play jazz, well, you need to learn this.
So good luck.